Welcome to Sobriety Checkpoint. I'm your host, Felicia Hermley. I'm a 12-stepper turned therapist. I'm married and I have two littles under five. I love Jesus, but have had my fair share of struggling with church culture and religion. I know what it's like to be stuck in a restless, irritable, and discontent rut, drunk and sober. In this podcast, you're going to find solutions to navigating mental health, spirituality, and relationships to experience the peace you've been craving. It's time for that desperately sought-after solo target run. Grab your keys and let's go for a drive. There's no judgment or breathalyzer at this sobriety checkpoint. Thanks so much for coming back this week. Welcome back to another episode of Sobriety Checkpoint. The last week or so, I have been kind of sick with a cold. There's been a cold coming through my house and um, hopefully... It's not turning into a sinus infection, but if I sound a bit under the weather tonight, that is the reason why. I was trying to figure out, you know, what did I want to talk about today? And I decided that I was going to do something that I used to do all the time in early recovery. I would go to one of my pieces of literature, whether that was the big book or the 12 and 12 or my Bible. And I would open it up to a random page, see what it says. And at that time, 13 years ago, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, those first couple of years of my sobriety, it felt like it was a magical process. It seemed like whatever I needed that day, I would open up the book and it would just be exactly what I needed. So I'm going to give that a shot today and open my big book to a random page, see what it has to say, and see what comes out of this episode. So here goes. All right, so I am in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. The story I opened up to is The Keys of the Kingdom, which is pages 268 through 275. I opened up to page 275. I'm going to start at the bottom of 274 where it says, I had a tough pull back to normal good health. It had been so many years since I had not relied on some artificial crutch, either alcohol or sedatives. Letting go of everything at once was both painful and terrifying. I could never have accomplished this alone. It took the help, the understanding, and wonderful companionship that was given so freely to me by my ex-Alki friends, this and the programs of recovery embodied in the 12 steps. In learning to practice these steps in my daily living, I began to acquire faith and a philosophy to live by. Whole new vistas were opened up for me, new avenues of experience to be explored, and life began to take on color and interest. In time, I found myself looking forward to each new day with pleasurable anticipation. AA is not a plan for recovery that can be finished and done with. It is a way of life. And the challenge contained in its principles is great enough to keep any human being striving for as long as he lives. We do not, cannot, outgrow this plan. As arrested alcoholics, we must have a program for living that allows for limitless expansion. Keeping one foot in front of the other is essential for maintaining our arrestment. Others may idle in a retrogressive groove without too much danger, but retrogression can spell death for us. However, this isn't as rough as it sounds, as we do become grateful for the necessity that makes us toe the line, and we find that we are compensated for our consistent effort by the countless dividends we receive. A complete change takes place in our approach to life. Where we used to run from from responsibility, we find ourselves accepting it with gratitude, and we can successfully shoulder it. Instead of wanting to escape some perplexing problem, we experience the thrill of challenge in the opportunity it affords, 
for another application of AA techniques, and we find ourselves tackling it with surprising vigor. I'm going to go ahead and read one more paragraph. The last 15 years of my life have been rich and meaningful. I've had my share of problems, heartaches, and disappointments because that is life. But also, I have known a great deal of joy and a peace that is the handmaiden of an inner freedom. I have a wealth of friends and with my AA friends as an unusual quality of fellowship. For to these people, I am truly related. First through mutual pain and despair, and later through mutual objectives and newfound faith and hope. And as the years go by, working together, sharing our experiences with one another, and also sharing a mutual trust, understanding, and love, without strings, without obligation, we acquire relationships that are unique and priceless. One of the things that I think is pretty cool about this section that I read is the second paragraph that I read where it says that this isn't a plan for recovery that can be finished and done with. It's a way of life. And the challenge contained in its principles is great enough to keep any human being striving for as long as he lives. We do not, cannot outgrow this plan. I think this is pretty timely. Uh, Last week, I mentioned that my uh, sobriety birthday is coming up on March 20th. I will be 13 in this particular story here. You know, whoever wrote it talked about the last 15 years of their life that had been rich and meaningful, but they also had their share of problems, heartaches, disappointments, because that is life. And I think that I have seen definitely ups and downs in my life in the past 13 years. The crazy thing, though, is that overall, life has been just so much better than it was before sobriety. And, you know, I know there's been hard times. I know I've had depression. I know I've had bouts of anxiety. I've had struggles. I've had issues with things like imposter syndrome issues with, you know, just low self-esteem and times of feeling alone. And I don't know, it's interesting because I actually feel like I'm searching for the hard times right now. I mean, it's life. So there have been hard times. There have been hard times. I think my very first episode, I talked about the struggles that I had with postpartum anxiety and depression And being a parent has been the most wonderful thing that I've ever done and the absolute hardest thing that I've ever done. The constant second-guessing, self-judgment, constantly questioning if I'm doing this thing right, those things are hard. And then at the same time, when I'm able to take a step back and just rest, look at their smiles, look at their joy look at what they bring to life, how they show up. I mean, there's so many there's so many lessons in that. But I really am struck a bit with the thought of feeling like I'm searching a bit <laughs> once again for the hard times. Like I mentioned, you know, there have been, but compared to the absolute despair that I experienced prior to my sobriety, I mean, life is good compared to how it was the despair, the desperation that I experienced. It's interesting bringing that word up, desperation, because I think that the desperation I experienced in my active drinking was a place I needed to be in order to get to the place of breakthrough, the place that I was able to encounter my higher power and let him in, you know, encounter my higher power and let him take the wheel. That that place of desperation was absolutely necessary for me to get to the point of surrender. And just this weekend, when um, we went to church, that was actually the, the sermon was about desperation. It was about the gift of desperation. And I don't think I've ever heard that as a sermon before in church. It's a topic that I've heard in meetings. It's something that I think we know in the rooms, we know the importance of the gift of desperation. We know that it's a gift. We know that it's something that 
we need to come back to when we're starting to feel like life is so good that we forget how it was. I mean, I think that that's one of the reasons why it's so important for me to not get too far away from meetings to make sure that I stay connected because I need those reminders. I need to hear other people's stories because I need to remember how it was. I need to remember the desperation. And whenever I'm in this place of remembering the desperation, I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude. And I hope that I am able to keep that gratitude and remember that, that gift that I received. I'm definitely feeling super grateful. It's it's amazing uh, the gifts that this program has given. And I would have to say that peace is the biggest one, that my sobriety has given me peace. My relationship with my higher power has given me peace, even through times of <laughs> intense anxiety throughout the years. Overall, the peace has just been amazing. Well, I am probably going to wrap it up here. The Keys of the Kingdom is definitely a great story. It's interesting to read about, to read about, you know, this being a way of life. Um, I'm super grateful for it. I'm glad that my uh, higher power brought me into the rooms to be able to experience this beautiful fellowship to, that, that I'm a part of, to be able to experience relationships in a way that I never had had before before 13 years ago. So yeah, super stoked. Yeah, next week I'll be celebrating 13 years of sobriety on Wednesday the 20th. And my husband, Jeff, he'll be celebrating 13 years of sobriety on Thursday. I hope that you'll come back next week because next Thursday he will be sharing his story about what it was like, what happened, and what it's like now. A few other things that are going to be coming in the next few weeks. I definitely have some some great guests on the lineup, and I'm excited to have them on to share their wisdom, share their tools, share their coping skills, just share the different things that they that they have for you. As um, you know, whether you're new to recovery, whether you're just trying to figure this out, whether you've been in recovery for a long time. Definitely don't want to miss the upcoming episodes. And I am super grateful that you're here, that you're listening. And thank you for coming back. And I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Before you go, please subscribe and leave a five-star written review. Reviews help boost my ratings, which helps other parents in recovery find my show. If you're interested in emotional sobriety coaching, please reach out and schedule a call. Check out the show notes for my contact info and social links. Don't forget to like, follow, and share with a friend. I'm super excited to know this podcast is helping you. Tune in Thursdays for the latest episode. I'll see you back here on your next Target run. Until next time. We are stronger than we think we are. So fight and show your strength. I can show you the way. All I can do is tell you my truth. Learning grace from our God. Learning grace from our God. Cause we are stronger than we think we are. So fight and show your strength. Learning grace from our God. Learning grace from our God. Learning grace from our God. Oh, learning grace from our God.